In this lesson, we're going to be looking at logos, and specifically, we're going to be looking at a logo from the company British Petroleum, or BP. And what I want you guys to do is look at what's involved in creating a logo and the marketing involved in order to make sure that the customer knows what the logo represents and what the brand is all about. Prior to 1998, British Petroleum was a respected international oil company. With holdings in over 60 countries, it was a mid-sized international energy company. Then, all that changed. Over the following four years, the company more than doubled in size and expanded into new markets through a series of mergers and acquisitions. In a very short time, it became one of the largest energy companies in the world. BP now faced an enormous challenge. How does a British company that operates internationally reinvent itself as a truly global organization? Over three years, the company went through a dramatic change. The company now called BP is the result of the merging of nine companies, each with its own vision. The company grew from 55,000 employees to 117,000. Most of the company's employees had no stake in the old British Petroleum. Since 1998, BP has decided to change its approach and its position um, out there in the world. And uh, we started uh, with a merger, a very important merger with Amoco, one of the most uh, important oil companies in the States. And that immediately gave us quite an important position in the American market. Rapidly after that, we then acquired um, Arco, also an American company, which for the first time gave BP a truly presence coast to coast from the east to the west of the US. Very important market, very important um, new position for us. Uh, following that, we had a number of other acquisitions. Uh, we acquired Castrol, uh, one of the most iconic lubricant brands, um, and that was a great um, opportunity for us. And more recently, uh, through a deal with Weber Oil in Germany, we acquired Aral. And Aral is the most important retail marketing brand in Germany and in Central Europe, giving us instantly a very, very powerful position in the European market. The new BP was therefore a company with no common past. They recognized a need to become a company with a common future. To achieve that, they undertook a major rebranding and internal repositioning effort. Our objective was to create a sense of belonging to a really new organization. And more importantly, was to create a sense of belonging to a new set of brand values behind which the whole organization could align with, could uh, support, and will actually um, relate to in their everyday um, uh, dealing uh, with customers, with stakeholders, with all consumers. In order to bring the various companies together, BP involved employees from all its component companies in creating the new brand. So we looked and we listened to all our employees. We tried to understand what the core values of the different companies we acquired were all about, and we built on that. And um, the new brand and its values uh, that we came up from were very, very new for most of the organization. And in fact, it was as challenging, as interesting for the BP uh, former employee, those who were working for the old British Petroleum, as from the employees who came from the other companies that merged or were acquired over the period of time. The new brand is more than just a marketing message. It expresses BP's four core values, performance, innovative, progressive, and green. These core values affect how everyone at BP approaches the company. BP refers to these core values as its corporate brand. For us at BP, um, it's clear that the brand is the way we are recognized, we are seen by the others, by others in the outside world. Um, but for us also, the brand is very importantly what we stand for. It's all about the core nature of the corporation 
how we are being perceived by the others, how we actually relate with our key stakeholders. Each of the core values influences the way BP operates. Performance is all about keeping our promises. It's about the financial performance. It's also about a core value that actually will uh, give us the right not only to grow but also to operate. Innovation, I think, is all about allowing your people to constantly seek new solutions to new problems. Um, it's all about allowing people to consider new options, new way to do things. Uh, now, a lot of companies may say that. I think at BP we push that a bit further. And what we've done, we created uh, a couple of years ago an internal program called the Helios Awards program. And that's a program where literally everyone in the corporation can enter, can participate, and present a project on which they are working. Progressive is one of these values where that relates really about, I think, a frame of mind. It really relates to an attitude within the company where we constantly challenge things. We never take things for granted. It's also, uh, very importantly for us, it's all about diversity. It's about rec recognizing the diverse nature of our organization and being really inclusive, really accepting that people have different ideas, come from different backgrounds in the organization, and, and, and recognizing and building on that value. Green is, of course, one of our very important values at BP. Um, and what does it mean? Um, firstly, we feel as a, as a whole company that we have a responsibility uh, for the environment in which we live. And therefore, uh, we have decided quite a few years ago, and I must stress ahead of legislation, that we had to take some action. Uh, one example is the work we do with car manufacturers, trying to either find new type of fuels, but also to find and, and help developing new type of engines for motor cars. But these values are not a pick and choose. These, these values live together. They very much operate in, in conjunction with, with, with each other, and that is very important. The core values transcend cultural differences in business environments across the globe. Ways of doing business may differ, but the core values are things on which everyone can agree. In Colombia, for instance, uh, we are operating around very strict guidelines and rules that we have set up for ourselves. These guidelines are much stricter, much more demanding in a way than what the local national legislation requires. And we have decided not to go for the easy option. We have decided to apply our core policies we support our values because that's what we believe in. The core values were put in place to address challenges, both internal and external, to the company. The first task in putting the new brand in place was to unify, excite, and motivate the entire organization around a common set of values and commitment. BP went through a series of processes to introduce the message to their people and to get them to understand and commit to the core values. The brand is very much part of the core training process of our employees. It starts with you are a young graduate joining the company, but more importantly, throughout the normal company life, there are a number of training um, uh, courses being organized, and we do have what we call in our jargon brand modules. Um, these are sessions where our employees with team leaders have an opportunity to discuss the brand values. What they actually mean for them in their daily life is not about uh, very complex intellectual ideas. It's about translating these values into their everyday life. Creating the association between the brand and key stakeholders, such as employees and partners, takes time and is an ongoing process. If the employees understand the values, delivery across various cultures comes naturally. The fact is that these different audiences we're dealing with, uh, when they deal with BP, they really deal with people. They deal with our employees, with the thousands of people who actually represent that corporation, that company. And that's where, of course, the linkage between building the brand internally with our employees and the external world becomes so important. What would you say to an oil company executive? I would tell them that technology is there enough for you to run a, a cleaner burning engine and use alternative fuels. 
Once the new brand was created and the strength of the organization was behind it, the company had to communicate it externally. Their first challenge was convincing consumers to change their negative view of the oil industry. I think it's absolutely fair to say that the oil industry did not always have a very positive image. I think that has changed significantly in the last few years. I think that BP certainly played a role in that. Uh, but it's true to say that a number of people still today have a fairly negative perception of the industry, mainly driven by the fact that it's not really known that well. So one of the key elements, one of the key strategies we decided to, um, to initiate was to redefine or to try to start redefining the relationship we have with society at large. BP focused its marketing efforts on its core values in order to create a positive response in the minds of customers and also to start establishing a new type of relationship with their stakeholders. And we realized we had as a corporation quite a number of advertising agencies around the world. And that's the reason why we made a decision to appoint one communication group worldwide that would take care of our advertising. And that was important because the world today is increasingly interconnected. And by appointing one communication group, that actually helped us to ensure consistency of our messaging around the world across the different communication messages that we have. One of the challenges for a global brand is to be responsive to local needs. I think it's a question of respect. It's a question of accepting and recognizing that we work in a very diverse world and that we need to uh, be respectful of that. Uh, let me give you an example. There are very obvious ones, of course, but if you operate in China, as we do, if you operate in Russia, as we do, if you operate in the Middle East, um, a very simple issue or challenge we have is the fact that there are countries where the written language is completely different and uh, you need to adapt a number of visual elements in order to have a communication program that fits these markets. You need to adapt your logo and the, the, the name of your company to the specific environment. That in itself is not always easy. Along the way, BP found it wise to keep a number of individual product lines. These brands were leaders in their markets and already demonstrated BP's core values, such as performance and innovation. In America, um, we have made a decision to rebrand the Amoco network to BP. However, Amoco had an absolutely fantastic high quality fuel called Amoco Ultimate. And we have decided to keep that product brand because it's a well recognized product. It's a product which really responds to the needs of our consumers in America. Another example is in lubricants. When we acquired Castro, one of the most famous lubricants brand around the world, we made almost instantly the decision to keep that brand, to nurture and develop that brand, which is so powerful. BP continues to work to deliver its brand message to a global market. The company has reinvented itself as a global citizen, guided by its core values. It's clear in my view that um, running an operation like this one, re repositioning BP, rebranding the corporation, growing in such a short time, requires a lot of efforts and investment. It also requires a clear sense of strategy. I think BP has all that, and I'm absolutely uh, certain that it will succeed. <laughs>